Welcome back to the TFT YouTube channel. I'm Angela, the CEO of TFT. And in this video, I am going to personally interview Blake, who is the chief growth officer of TFT. Most of you guys know Blake from his YouTube channel and have come over to TFT per Blake's recommendation. We know him as an expert in the prop trading industry, and I've had the honor to interview him. So let's hop into the interview. Let's hear some thoughts from Blake on the prop trading industry and some background of who he is. Hey everybody, this is Angelo, CEO of TFT. I'm joined today by Blake, who is the founding partner of TFT. It's a pleasure to have you here, Blake. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm the chief growth officer of the Funder Trader and uh, happy to be here. Everybody is curious, you know, thoughts from Blake. And as everybody knows, Blake was a huge part of starting this firm. So we definitely want to get Blake's insights on a few questions that people posted inside of the Discord. To get started, Blake, starting your own prop firm, walk us through what went into this. What made you decide to create your own? Yeah, so basically, it all started when I was in college, and I uh, ended up going through a phase where I was teaching people how to trade both for another company and for my own, and uh, eventually got to the point where I wanted to prove myself. So I started taking challenges from other prop firms, of course, the furniture wasn't around just yet, and then passing it and making videos on my YouTube channel about it. Those got a lot of traction, a lot of popularity. I started making even more videos on YouTube thereafter, and I started passing more and more prop firm challenges. And I Want to, was, I eventually got curious enough. How do these prop firms do it? How do they, how are they so successful? How are there so many of them? Is it a viable business strategy? So I started looking into that, and then I uh, got contacted by Angelo, and we started to talk a little bit more in detail about how we can start a, a really good prop firm that will actually be more competitive than the rest of the industry. And that is how we started the Final Trader. Yeah, I mean. So walking back from from my perspective, I wondered, you know, what was Blake up to? And I went to your YouTube and I saw you starting off, you were taking the challenges, like you said, and you were just doing honest reviews uh, because you genuinely wanted to help people with passing them. And obviously, people were really grateful that you're putting those videos together. And then pretty much for us getting this started, you just had a, a genuine curiosity, you know, for prop firms and just trading in general. Walk us through, you know, taking us back um, to college in your early days, you know, what 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 made you actually get into trading? Yeah, so I first got introduced to Forex uh, my freshman year of college when uh, an MLM uh, reached out to me, basically recruited me. And I was never interested in the MLM side of it, but I did get my initial uh, prop firm insights from that side of it. I never made a single dollar from recruiting anyone or anything like that. Uh, but I did end up staying with that company for nine months. And they actually had in-person access to the top trader of that company. And that's how I first learned my initial, uh, my baby steps, if you will, of how to trade. And then that all progressed from there. I started teaching other people eventually how to trade and then eventually started my own company. Did you uh, graduate from college? Yeah, I actually did. I, I graduated from Arizona State with a business administration degree. I know a lot of people want, want to know the answer to that question. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you think is more challenging, trading or running a business? That's a good question. Uh, they're both difficult in their own ways. With with trading, it all comes down to do you know your stuff? Whereas with running a business, you definitely need to know your stuff, but you also need to know how to have file our taxes, how to hire the right employees, how to have good relationships with your other co-founders. And you have to balance everything all together in order to have such a successful business. And it matters so much on other people uh, as well and also kind of managing other people, whereas trading is all alone. It's just all what you put into it. So I definitely think that running a business is more difficult, uh, but trading is definitely... I like the aspect of uh, if if you fail, you know it's on you, it's not on anyone else. Whereas with the business, that's not always the case. Yeah, and I think there's there's obviously positives and negatives um, to both. And considering we've been running TFT now for about a year and a half, you know, we're gonna be coming up on two years and everything that you've learned from running this business and obviously reviewing other businesses, where do you see the prop firm industry being five years from now? I think in five years from now, it'll be almost completely mainstream. I think that it's still in its early infancy, maybe a little bit more progressive now uh, with all these bigger companies coming into the picture. But I think that it's still not bigger than normal trading accounts. But I think that will change. I think people are really waking up to the idea that if you just have a small amount of money or only want to risk a small amount of money in order to get big amounts of funding, the prop firm is the best choice. And that is only going to grow. The whole industry has been growing so fast over the last couple of years. 
I don't see any sign of it stopping anytime soon. Yeah, I agree. The industry, prop firm industry is growing, like you said, so quickly. Um, there's huge potential for this in the future to go more mainstream because this, at the end of the day, does provide um, a life-changing opportunity to people to monetize their skills um, and to showcase you know, who they really are. So give me a bit more details, You know, going back again to your early trading journey. How did you get into Forex? You know, what, what is some piece of advice you would give to somebody that's just getting in? If you want to get into Forex and you're not already into it, uh, first of all, congrats on finding prop from before trading. That's definitely a, a good on you for doing that. And the second thing I would say is be sure to not risk your own money at the beginning. That's something that is is like broken record. Everyone says that, but very few people actually do it. Everyone thinks that they're the special snowflake that is going to be able to not need a demo account. I can just start a real funded account. Let me just fund my account with a couple hundred dollars, thousand dollars. What is it? And then they end up blowing the whole thing. And that's not what you want to do. You don't want to be part of that. So you definitely want to make sure that you do stick to your demo account for a super long time. And then once you are ready, decide if it's worth it to do your own account with a broker of uh, the very no normal way, or is it better to risk the uh, the prop firm's money and go with a prop firm instead? And I think if you do enough research, I think you'll probably find it's usually the latter. Yeah, no, I agree. Considering you know when you started trading was a few years ago and things were much different than they are now. Um, given your current situation, what do you focus the most on in your current day to day? I definitely have gone away from the normal trading type of things. I'm definitely all in on the prop firm scene at this point. I am a huge fan of, of prop firms, as everyone knows, who's a, who's a, a follower of my channel. And I'm really involved with uh, the firm trader, along with helping a couple other prop firms as well. I want the whole industry to start growing or grow even more than it already is. So I'm very much all in on that side of things at this point in time. Yeah, and I definitely want to reiterate and echo that Blake is a huge reason that TFT continues to offer great challenges and makes adjustments that people are really happy with. You know, our community um, obviously has grown and like Blake said, he's our chief growth officer and we definitely appreciate him continuing to increase his expertise across the industry. You know, he really is the subject matter expert when it comes um, to prop trading. I can't echo that enough. So that being said, talking about your channel, I know a lot of people have come over from your channel to TFT and they, they have this question. How do you prevent having a bias in reviewing these prop firms now that you're affiliated publicly with TFT? That's a really good question. So actually over a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago or so, I, I released a video on my channel where I, I said to you guys that I will not try, I'll try my best to not sway my opinion. I will not try to give the fund trader any sort of uh, leeway with, with being harsh on them. And I, I think I've done a really good job of that thus far. Uh, it definitely might have a little bit of a conflict of interest. I want to be completely transparent and open about that. But I'm also very transparent about my ownership in the fund trader. And I think because of that, I've done a really good job thus far of, of being honest, both with the fund trader as well as with other prop firms and trying to give my best job at an unbiased review of all the prop firms all in as, as a collective. Yeah. And I think from my perspective, the part of the attraction was working with Blake was how genuine and authentic his messaging and communication style was on his page. And I think it only benefits us for him to actually be brutally honest about what we're doing and who we are on his page. Um, So it's like our goal is obviously to be the number one prop firm just in the industry. But if we're not, you know, it's definitely something that should be talked about. And with people like Blake and other channels who are reviewing us, we'd rather them have a unbiased review so we have room for improvement just then just fake it because that doesn't do anyone justice right so going off of the, i think this is a perfect segue into this question what does transparency actually mean for tft well i think honestly the biggest part of of transparency is honesty and there are several prop firms that they trust pilot reviews they hire celebrities they write reviews <laughs> about themselves and they put those in paid articles to make them seem more legit than they really are the fund trader has never done any of these and in my opinion is one of the most transparent prop firms out there. Yeah, and we're definitely uh, trying to communicate when there's issues and just be as transparent as we can be. Um, so for myself, that has, it's the same meaning. We're very much aligned with that is we're not trying to fake anything. Um, there's no power in faking anything. It doesn't do anyone justice. You know, we're trying to get genuine results and, you know, that's critical to TFT's mission. So, so this is, uh, this is probably the most important question. This question is also going to resonate with a lot of people out there and they may want an answer to it. Um, so this was posted in the Discord. Someone said, I have back pain sitting in front of my chart all day trading these challenges. Um, how do you 
you overcome this? Do you eat food in front of the charts? What do you do? <laughs> so, what, <laughs> so what do you do, Blake? <laughs> well, that's, that's a good question. Basically, one of the most important things if you are going to spend a lot of time in front of your computer is either get a standing desk so you can switch between it. So you can start switch between standing and sitting. And when you are sitting, make sure it's a decent chair. You don't want a really hard chair. <laughs> Basically, you want you want maybe an ergonomic one that can support your back as you're trading for a long time. Yeah. So we'll include links in there for chairs. And <laughs> yeah. I, I will say I recently got a stand-up desk and it's definitely improved my uh my quality of life because sitting in a chair all day is definitely not not the best for us. Um, so Blake, really appreciate you taking the time to hop on to do this interview. Obviously hope to do future interviews with you as well. To close it off, we want to ask uh, one final question. What are your current top three prop firms? Oh, uh, well, I'm actually, I've made quite a few top seven videos. Uh, I actually have a new top four video coming out very soon. Uh, and the reason why I did the top four for this up upcoming one is because that one is focusing just on prop firms that are have an instant funding program or a one phase, which by the way, the fund trader is coming out with one very soon. Um, that one is, is going to be really good. But if I had to give my top three right now, overall, I would definitely have to say the fund trader more than deserves to be uh, on that top spot or uh, one of the top three of it at the very least, uh, very much have earned that. And it also have to go with the classic prop firm that paved the way for the rest of the industry, which is FTMO, as well as what is, in my opinion, the current most underrated prop firm, which is Funded Trading Plus. Yeah, no, I think that like always, you know, FTMO definitely has paved the way for all of us. So I'm very much in agreement. So Blake, really appreciate you coming on, taking the time, answering everybody's questions. I know everyone out there appreciates it. Make sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, guys, to get more updates like this and look out for further updates coming out from Blake in the future. Thanks, Angelo. Bye.